Welcome everybody, welcome back to a tutorial for administrators that are using the MCG StarCraft plugin. There are some important changes in the last version, version 2.0. Keep in mind, the older versions than 2 do not have these changes. So let's start off with the basic tutorial on the new GUI system and command system. First off, slash paste does not contain any administrative commands anymore. So if I do TP, I do not get anything. So that's basically it. Space is now a normal command for players. Space admin is a new command for administrators. And the most best feature, if you press it without, you get all the commands to use manually, or you can use a new, you can possibly see it already, GUI command. This new GUI contains many features, including a complete world designer. And that's where we come out later in this video. The teleport menu speaks for itself. It generates a menu with all the uh, worlds. And then when there are more worlds that fit onto lines, it generates a button for the next uh, page. So you can get more worlds. As you can see, I have generated a few normal worlds, a few custom worlds called star X, star X2 and star 3. And the rest is all normal imported or used. So, and when you click something like this, for example, I click on Aquatic, you will directly go there. No animation, no special features. Um, the next thing is create loot table. Some people had a harsh problems with making a loot table. They do not understand how the command worked. Well, as simply as it is, simply place whatever you want in which slot you want in a, a chest. Um, in what amount, I don't care. And it will directly one on one copy this chest as a loot table. When you're opening the GUI and pressing the create loot table button, it directly says table added to config, which means it directly is usable by other uh, builds, POIs, and such if they are configured to use them. The loot table system uses a numeric ID. So by default, I provide, I believe, four loot tables in default. And people, uh, when this one that I just added is loot table five. Um, in dungeon configurations and in POI configurations, you can add the number five to the list in order to use, for example, this one, uh, if you have added a uh, tier five. So that's how the loot table system works. The next one is create POI. For that one, we are going back to the uh, normal world. A POI is a building that can generate on different worlds on top of the servers or floating on a certain level or underground. For example, these are all POIs that are in the plugin itself. Currently, it tries to get the entire chunk up to the sky from the point of where you're standing. For example, um, it always scans from zero, zero in a chunk. There's this spot over here. Oh, my bad. This spot over here, and uh, how it works, I'm standing here, and as you can see, chunk 060, and if I start walking over here, you can see that the numbers go up. So basically, it scans from 00 up to the left and forward, and then up to the sky. The sky is the limit. <laughs> Anyways, there is where the um, difficulty comes in for some people. If you start building your uh, structure, you are planning building a uh, nice BOI, for example, uh, this uh, pile of uh, grass blocks. <laughs> and then you are gonna stand on this uh, point here. It will pick every block from this block and up. From this block that I just placed and up. Because my feet area should be the lowest block that your build has. Now, you start stand on the zero zero spot on your chunk. Oh. My mistake, I'm gonna fly back. I'm terrible at this, uh, making a video. It's a little bit too long ago. Anyways, you stand here, do space admin UI or the PUI creation command, click on create PUI. First off, there is a button there to set the name for the build. In this case, I'm gonna call it um, my pal. 
And when I click the button, it changes the GUI title to My Pal, so you can see that it's using My Pal. More instruction you can find on the, the website itself. As soon as I click Create, it creates the POI file and puts it in the root folder of the plugin. This file needs to be moved into the POI folder and configured into the POI settings file. If you do not do that, then it will not be picked up by any generation. So keep in mind that you need to add it manually in the configuration files, because otherwise people can just add, 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 and kill the server that way. Um, so server owner can uh, add them to the configuration file that way. Creating dungeon tiles is basically completely the same, but also a little bit different. It sounds weird, but let's just take a look at one of the tiles that I have. These are all tiles that I generated and every block that's on top is basically that it's included in the 2.0 version. So I made a lot of them and you might think why is all the why are all these looking like a stone cube? Well, let me explain a little bit. Dungeon tiles are nothing more than a chunk like this one with a max height of 16. Sixteen blocks high. Always sixteen blocks. So you can make multi-layer dungeons as long as it's sixteen blocks high. That's as simple as it is. This is, for example, one that's an endpoint. As uh, you can see, I have designed it in the inside, and it's an endpoint. Same thing over here. There is a corner here, and it always needs to be copied from zero zero. This is also the way you look in order to decide which is north, west, east, and south. So if I take a look at this one, and uh, standing in the middle here, you can see that the entrance was on that side, right? That's east from the design. North, west, south, and east. This is important because the plugin needs to know which way is open for other pieces to fit in. When you are here and you open the GUI, there is a button create dungeon tile. When you click on it, you get this GUI with these buttons. In this case, east must be open because that's an, a, a hallway that can connect to other hallways on the right side of this block. As soon as I click create, it creates a file with zero, one, zero, zero. Basically the file is named after which gate is open, north, east, south, west in that order. Keep in mind that if you want to have multiple designs for a certain uh, open and close tag, uh, you need to rename the file before you create another one with the same name, otherwise it overrides the old one. As simple as it is. When you click create, it saves it as same thing to the main folder of the plugin. In order to make a new theme and such, I will provide a theme file with the plugin as soon as you launch it. Take a look at the default theme file for the abandoned base theme in order to see how it works. Just simply replace the values as you wish and copy it over to your design. Rename the folder. For example, I have abandoned base as a folder with a theme file in it and the tile folder therein. In this case, you need to create a folder with the name of your theme. For example, a uh, glass, glass uh, base, for example, or... Uh, um, jungle temple or anything you want to call it. Then inside that folder you put the team file and create another folder called tiles. And in the tiles folder you put all the tiles you have. The team file contains configuration values to configure which tiles are available, for which direction is open, as well as which designs to use for which one. As well as in which Y layer it will spawn in the world and if it contains stairs or not. In my case the default start position is this one. It contains stairs going up. And because I have made it so that it always spawns on the ground, I made it so that I have enabled create generate stairs to true, so that it starts generating the chairs from the middle spot with on two sides ladders going up. The two sides that the ladders going up are always the same, north and south. So if you design your building, make sure that the stairs, or ladders in this case, they are always north or south or both. So I can, for example, do this one and make it down. But if I do this one to make it down, then it doesn't fit with the other stairs that will generate above it like so. So that's how you dungeon make. There's one special feature. Every barrel you place and every chest 
you place a standalone chest, not a connected chest. This one doesn't work, this one works. Will be filled with loot table, also configured in the configuration file, which you can create with the loot table creation assistant, um, as well as that you need to configure it in the team file, which one they use. In that case, they will use it. Redstone is working. So in this case, I made one that sits around like a, a damaged lamp or something. Uh, they will still work after generating. And last but not least, it will remember the spawner types. However, one thing that is not supported are custom mobs. Only default mobs that are in the game are supported by the spawners. So if you make a spawner somewhere, keep in mind that the spawner will not work if the mob doesn't exist in default Minecraft. So modded is excluded. You can make, for example, furnaces, chests, crafting tables. They are all usable and generated randomly inside your dungeon. Trap doors and, uh, are working. Normal doors are a question on itself. Sometimes the doors will glitch out. Spawners, don't forget to set them to what they need to be. For example, this is a zombie and this is a skeleton one that I set. Oh, hello, Mr. Zombie. Um, they will be copied over exactly as it is. So that's how the Dungeon Tile Maker works. Another thing that you might want to do sometime is generate a dungeon on your own. Not looking at somebody else, but really making a dungeon on command. It's possible. However, it does follow how it's configured in the dungeon settings on the world settings file. So if you have set a certain team in the world settings file for that world, it will use that team. And if there is nothing configured, it will not work. As simple as it is. So space admin, uh, GUI, and there is another button, a must-see uh, brick. It follows the config, but it generates a dungeon right where I'm standing. And I heard a pang, and as you can see, there is a dungeon out of nothing here. This is a dungeon that I, which is using the default one. And as you can see, it made stairs, north and south ladder, all the way down to the, the piece, the dungeon tile that I have made before. And when you're in a dungeon, it generates random. So nothing, no two dungeons are easily the same. So basically, they are all different. Everything has their own design. It will pick tiles at random, but it's limited to a certain chance to extend, which is configured in a theme file. As I said before, and what I showed, the spawners are working and copied nicely over. But, of course, there is a chance that the dungeon will be small or big, no matter the chance of extending. Because if it randomizes an endpoint, it cannot connect new chunks on these sides. Those, so this tree is ended. Then it will try to go to other sections in order to do something like that. And that way is how the dungeon is generated. Dungeon generation is not lightweight. It is set to a minimum mark, so it will not spawn everywhere continuously. But keep in mind, if you let it generate everywhere, be sure to pre-render your world without players online in order to get it stable. If you want to walk around in your world and have dungeons set to generate constantly, your server will crash because it needs mm. to generate so many blocks at once, it cannot handle it. As simple as it is. Dungeons can be generated underground, above ground, in the air, in, in the middle of the room, in a void world, no matter where. Keep in mind, the chunks are the chunks. There is a base material or ground material in the team file which specifies which block to ignore when taking over a dungeon team. So in this case, because I want this area to be hollow, I made sure to use cubes made of stone because that's a block that I'm not using in the build. I set the configuration file to exclude stone in uh, generating this dungeon. So basically the ground stays intact in the worlds that it generates in. But the dungeon itself, because it's not stone, will be there as it should be. So that's basically the dungeon tile generation. And now for the most awesome thing that I have built into the plugin, which is unique to my plugin at the moment, custom world generation. 
When you open the world creator, you can edit a existing world or create a new one. Let's create a new one. I'm going to call it YouTube. When I click OK, I get a new menu. It's a little bit overwhelming at first, but everyone is documented in what it does and what the setting currently is. First off, if you use a bungee uh, teleportation mode, you can set the server on this button over here. When you click it, it asks for the name, you enter it and it's done. Permission can be changed. It's by default world.worldName, but you can change it in whatever you want. The radiation level is the same thing as input as the name. So for example, this world can have a radiation of one. When I click OK, the world radiation level is now one. Everything is saved directly as soon as you do something in this UI. So when you crash or you accidentally click the exit or outside of it, it's all saved. No worries, just edit your uh, thing as soon as the server is restarted. Mob system is a toggle button. When you click on it, it changes from true to false and backwards. Disabled mob list is basically you can add mobs. If the mob system is true, you can add mobs that are not spawning in that world. For example, if I click on this one and I enter zombie in caps, by the way, it will add it to the list and you can see zombie. I can also add a uh, spider to the list. And then a spider in the list. And basically you can keep on doing this. Keep in mind, uh, they, use, they use the mob uh, names as defined in the enum statistics of Spigot. So if you want to know the list of mob names, uh, Google uh, Spigot mob names. And then you will certainly find the mob type or entity types there are. You can remove the last added mob by clicking that button. You can enable or disable uh, if oxygen is required in that world, true or false. Icon slot is a very important one. You can set in which slot in the GUI in the row. For example, this is uh, row 0, row 1, and then this is slot 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, and so on. 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. And basically, it also says it's between uh, two uh, brackets. 0 to 8 are the only options you do. If you enter something above it, you will generate errors in your console. This is due to your own fault, because you do not enter what's maxed. Basically, slot 0, row 0 will be the left top icon. So, in that case, the icon for this world will be the exit button. If this was the UI. The row speaks for itself. 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Basically, if the UI is normally 6 uh, lines big. So, yeah, the row is pretty big. Keep in mind, um, I made a mistake in calculation. So, it shows 5 here. But it normally is... Uh, a different uh, amount, three, I believe. I have uh, no, it's five. It's correct. I already adjusted. It was three. I, okay, never mind. Ignore me. Uh, low gravity speaks for itself. Generate structures if you want the POIs to generate. Set galaxy is where which galaxy it is in. Normally, it defaults to my galaxy, but you can change it to whatever galaxy you want. For example, Obasis is by default the default galaxy if you want to put it in the normal one. But you can generate multiple galaxies by simply changing the name here. Meteorite, meteorite strikes speak for itself. If it's true, there is a chance that a meteorite will hit your head. Um, for hand leave decay, prevents leave from decaying. The generator, keep it like this in order to use the custom generator. In every other case, you can change it into uh, space, radiated generator, those things in order to generate a duplicate of any uh, official world. Um, biome data is ignored if you change this one. So, biome data is where you enter the names of the biomes you want to use in your world. Uh, all the biomes can be found in the biome data folder inside your uh, plugin installation. There you can also design custom biomes to be used. You can uh, click on this button and for example add a comma and then uh, planes, because that's also an official uh, biome that I've added. And then click OK, and it adjusts it here. And you can see that there are two biomes we'll generate the entire world from. Uh, the liquid level is how high the water is by default. I have set it to 40, but you can increase and decrease it all along the way. Uh, liquid material is in this case water, but you can literally change to every block. You can make the ocean made of slime blocks or made of bedrock or made of stone. So you can change the world in whatever you like. The roof nets is how um, directly the world can change from uh, height. 
So if you take a look on the mountain on the left side of my screen, it's the default one. But if I, for example, increase the roughness, then it will be steeper uh, in the end. The X, Y, and Z and W scale is something you need to figure out a little bit yourself because it depends on what uh, you enter in the side of biomes and such in your world. But basically they will change how the world is generated in form of mountains, valleys, uh, different sizes. For example, a, a cylinder-shaped mountain or a oval-shaped mountain. It's all depending on the values here. Fair warning, do not change it anywhere higher than 0.0. .0 one zero uh, you can change it higher but the world will be extreme extremely changed um dungeons speak for itself dungeon team is important if you set this one to true be sure to set at least one team if you do not do set a team it will break it just throws errors so by default it's abandoned base abandoned base and when you click it it sets it you can add multiple themes uh, it picks a run at random when generating a dungeon, so you can have multiple dungeon teams in single world. And the loot tables are for the dungeon itself. Like I said before, if you create a loot table, you get a loot ID. So in this case, I will I want to add loot table 1, and I want loot table 5, which we just created. Then it will have two loot tables. You cannot reset this UI value. I've done this because otherwise people are going to start complaining about the fact they found a dungeon, somebody looted it and said they got diamonds, and a few moments later it's something different. I want to not enforce it from my own perspective. So, And when you're done, you simply exit the GUI. Now, as soon as you restart the server, the world will be generated as you configured it into the configuration file. So if you have a moment, I will start the server and showcase what we have made. Welcome back. This is the uh, YouTube world that we designed inside our uh, editor. I just restarted the server and as you can see this is Roughland and this is the planes. And it basically combines both into a world. So in this case, this is the world that we have ending here. The biome data can be adjusted accordingly. Uh, in this case these are trees without leaves, which you can set all in the configuration file. Here we have dead scrubs, here we have grass. Here we have cactuses of um, five blocks high. Um, they can be any size, by the way. Um, it's all set in the configuration file of the biome data itself. But it has some beautiful looks to it. You can make any world you want. The settings that we just saw in the uh, generator generates this uh, little hill world. Small hills, basically. Um, but you can adjust it to uh, whatever you uh, like. In this case, this is the beach of Roughland. It uses Botzel, I believe. That's what's going on, of course. Um, and if you go into the grassland, you can see it's just normal grass. See? With a little bit of sand around it. Um, the biome coloring that Minecraft does is still there. I cannot adjust it. But it looks pretty awesome to see the world shifting in color shades. But basically this world is also endlessly generating using the biomes you specified. Um, and if you want to know how it works, as you can see here, we are going over the biome Warm Ocean. And um, that's now rough land over here. And if I go and continue on and go to this uh, area over here, we can see it change to Lukewarm Ocean. And then to Beach. And River and Desert. And basically all the default biomes get replaced by the biomes you designed. It's all configurable in the, the biome data file. And uh, there is a way to combine multiple blocks into a simple single block setting for the biome files. You can see that in a theme file. Um, I believe that's biome theme or anything like it. Uh, block themes, that was it, I believe. Uh, inside the biome data folder in order to create custom sets of blocks to be used as combination. For example, I can uh, make a block combination that uh, changes grass to all flowers in combination. So you can change it, uh, this tree stump into all types of glass, all color, colors of glass, and so on. So if I, for example, teleport to my star X tree, I believe, then you can see, for example, I change this one to um, my cellia floor with trees made of brown and red mushroom blocks. And I have changed the cactus to be mushroom stems. 
And uh, here is one that exists out of only stone and cobblestone cactus uh, points or trees, whatever it is. Um, and if I go to here, you can see uh, snow with a snow layer on top of it, ice spikes in form of cactuses beforehand, and so on. I can see in my configuration it's uh, starting to generate uh, a dungeon around here. Um, that's uh, cool to see. But for example in this world I've set the oceans or water type in this case to black glass. So this is glass what I'm walking on. But normally this would be water. So this is an ocean made of glass. Cool isn't it? And if I go from uh, star X to star 2, there is a nice example of using different colored wool. Um, I set the cactus length to max of 10. And as you can see here, I have set the cactus type to uh, diamond. So in this case, you get big spikes of diamond blocks. While uh, rough lens, that's this one, uh, is normal cactus. So every biome has its own thing. I've made trees of glowstone and uh, a chosen color of wool using the random wool color. Uh, theme, block theme. So in this case, reds and all types of colors. Trees are generated in a certain design and contains a spike on top of it or not. Some missing blocks, others do not miss blocks. So basically it's randomly designed. And as you can see, it generates a pretty nice world. Keep in mind the lag spikes that you might see sometimes here is because I have dungeons set to generate pretty fast in, uh, in my world. It's uh, very common that a dungeon generates due to testing purposes. Uh, but as you can see, I can just run around without dying, but I had one hiccup just a few moments ago, like now, for example, and that's just because there is a dungeon being generated in the neighborhood. Uh, do note that if you use lava, for example, in Roughlands, we have lava instead of water as the ocean, um, things can turn on to fire around it and when you have set the ocean pretty high with a lot of burnable land mass it generates huge amount of lag so keep in mind that do not overthrow the uh, world generator and minecraft with your own crazy ideas of making a wooden world with lava ocean for example um <laughs> ah there's the dungeon that was generating see so um, I think that's it for the admin tutorial. Keep in mind uh, the command change to space admin. Uh, there is one thing that you cannot change uh, anymore and that's the new recipe for recipe books. I explained why in the player tutorial. If you want to see it, it's on the start of the player tutorial that I explain it how. Um, yeah, that's basically it for now. I thank you all for watching this uh, small tutorial and hopefully I will see you in the next one. And if you have any bug reports and such, be sure to contact me. I uh, will want to fix them uh, right away for you as uh, soon as I have the time for it. So thank you all for watching once again. See you all in the next one. Good luck!